What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So we had yet again another red day in the stock market and we got to break it down in this video. We also have to go over some stocks, what I'm doing in the markets, and of course how I'm maneuvering in these markets as we're seeing a lot of volatility, a lot of fear, and of course a lot of uncertainty. So if you guys find value, hit the like button, subscribe, join my Patreon, and make sure to get your five stocks from Moomoo, literally free money guys all you have to do is use my link down below deposit at least $100 and you could get up to five stocks each of which could be valued up to $3,500 so let's talk as of now well I guess the markets as of now are closed we closed about 30 minutes ago and let's see if we're uh, moving up after market hours we're moving a little bit up after market hours but overall the markets today did not do well we had spy closed down 0.4% the Dow went down 0.5. The Russell also went down about 0.5% as we have the NASDAQ down about 0.1%. And what you guys can notice here is we had a bit of a relief rally heading into close after that initial dump, which occurred at about, I think, 1, yeah, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. You guys can see here, SPY went from 441 down to about 435 in the matter of just 30 minutes to an hour. We dropped about 1.4%. Percent, and that was on news that there were satellite videos, images, whatever it was, that Russia was moving more towards an attack position on the Ukraine border. And who knows what's going to happen with this, guys? I've been saying that for the past couple of videos. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear. Is this a legitimate concern? Is it Western propaganda? Who knows at this point? But what we do know, like I've been saying, is the market is not liking this. The VIX was up over 30 earlier in the day. It was up 15% at one point. It closed at about 28 points, up 3%. So the VIX did come down, which is a good sign, but I'm not completely buying this uh, relief rally, guys. Quite honestly, I think it's a bull trap. Yes, I mean, it is a rally. That's good. Maybe some day, uh, some day traders made some money, but overall, the uh, zigzagging market we've been in, uh, if the pattern repeats itself, this is setting up for another dump. I mean, look, all these rallies that we had throughout the day, uh, throughout the day just today, ended up selling off. We had a big pop pre-market, that sold off right at market open. We rallied to about 1 p.m., then we ended up dumping and then we started rallying again into close. So I'm not convinced that we're just going to be breaking out from here. We're likely going to see more volatility and we're likely going to uh, end up dumping and maybe even taking out the lows from today intraday, which were uh, right around 435 to about 436. So look at this 20 day chart on SPY, guys. Well under the moving averages. We're seeing a death cross. The double top is playing out. You guys know this. We've talked about this in many of my videos. And when it comes to Triple Q, same thing. Talk about volatility, guys. Talk about a zigzagging market. This thing shot up pre market. It shot up throughout the beginning of the day into the middle of the day. Then we ended up dumping down from about 351 to 343. It lost almost 2% over 2% of its value from about 1 to 2 p.m. And then we ended up having a relief rally heading into close. And like I said with SPY, this could easily be a bull trap. I mean, all, literally every rally that we've had on this five-day, five-minute chart, 20-day chart, every rally ended up being a bull trap. And the fact that we're under both moving averages on the 20-day chart, we're seeing a death cross, we closed under 350, which was a big support. Now it's resistance. That's not giving me any confidence from the bull's uh, perspective. And I think Triple Q, like I've mentioned before, I think we're going to go down and test 335, 340 in the middle of all this uh, volatility, right? And the whole Russia-Ukraine situation, again, a lot of uncertainty. And personally, guys, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree on this, nobody wants to see an all-out war break out. Nobody wants Russia to invade. Nobody wants that to cause a ripple effect. Who knows what's going to happen? But the truth is, nobody wants this. Nobody wants this, except for maybe a select few people. We're not going to talk about that. Some people do benefit from war. Uh, we're not going to get into that in this video. 
They probably want it to happen, but I know me, I don't want it to happen, and I know dang well you probably don't want it to happen either. So volatility's here, guys, volatility's here, and let me tell you, if we do break out into war, which again, I do not want that to happen at all, you guys are going to have to brace for impact. That's just the truth of the uh, the matter here. So we're going to talk about some stocks in this video that did very well today. Some that didn't do that well and some, one in particular that's in a bear market, which is interesting considering it's a blue chip stock. We're going to talk about a lot in this video. So if you are finding value thus far in the video, hit the like button, subscribe, make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments. And of course, get your five stocks from Moomoo, guys, literally free money. All you have to do is use my link down down below deposit at least 100 bucks and you could get up to five stocks each of which could be valued up to 3500 bucks so let's talk about some stocks smith and wesson today which you guys probably know most of you know what smith and wesson does right this stock did very well, up 1.7%, and it kind of makes sense. Uh, it makes sense why the stock did well, considering uh, what kind of company it is, and maybe we're going into war, probably not, but... It, who knows, right? It's uncertain at this point. So Smith & Wesson did pretty well today. The stock, again, like I said, went up 2%, and we've covered this stock before on the channel, right? It had a lot of demand. The products that this company produces, they had a lot of demand over the past two years, and that's why the stock went ballistic. If I pull up the three-year chart, this stock went crazy back in 2021. Uh, in 2020 as well, guys, you can see this stock went from 7 bucks in March 2020. It shot up all the way to about... 22 bucks by the beginning of 2021 and then in the middle of 21 it went all the way to almost $40 and now we're cut in half and some uh, we're down about 56% from that peak back in the middle of 2021 about eight months ago and this is a stock that I've covered that it's a value play in my opinion. The P is very low. They pay a nice dividend. And I think there's a decent margin of safety with this stock considering how much it's down and how low the valuation is from the way I've been uh, looking at it. And on top of that, technically speaking, SWBI is breaking out of the moving averages now. Finally, it's been under the uh, 180 SMA ever since they reported earnings last quarter, which if you guys recall, this stock cratered after their most recent earnings. They went down from $23 down to about 16 so they lost 30% in the span of a couple of days. That was back in the beginning of December. And since then, we've seen some very strong consolidation. So now that we're breaking out of this 180 SMA, maybe we start filling the gap over the next couple of weeks. This is not a crypto coin. It's not a hype stock that's going to go up 20% in a day, 40% in a day. But over the next weeks, couple of months, maybe we do slowly start filling the gap towards 20, 21, maybe $22 a share, which again was support back in November, December. And obviously now it's resistance since we're trading under it. So Smith & Wesson, they have earnings coming up in about a month from now, actually three weeks. So that's going to come up pretty quickly. If they knock the ball out of the park with earnings, this could easily go back over 20 bucks a share in my personal opinion. So watch out for Smith & Wesson, SWBI, EXP is also one that's doing pretty well recently. It's been doing well. This is Expedia. It went up 2.6% today, and they just reported earnings, I believe, last week on Thursday. They did EPS of $1.06, so they did EPS of over a dollar, and their estimate was $0.67. Cents. So they destroyed the estimate on EPS, and revenue did not destroy. It actually missed by about... 0.03 billion so they did 2.28 billion versus 2.31 billion estimated so they slightly missed on revenue eps crushed again like i said and this stock's been doing pretty well and on top of that we got a lot of um you know upgrades and overweight outperform ratings from credit suisse barclays um we have a couple here from um what else is here? Truist Securities, UBS. So a lot of these firms are bullish on Expedia. And I've mentioned before, guys, on the channel, just because a lot of 
analysts and firms are bullish on a stock, it doesn't mean I'm going to go dive into it and go all in without doing research. I mean, you could do that, but I think that's pretty dumb just blindly following, you know, a bunch of firms because a lot of the time, sometimes, not a lot of the time, but sometimes they could be wrong, right? As I could be wrong, all of us could be wrong with stocks. So be careful blindly following anybody for that matter. Uh, but overall, the trend, the chart does not lie. Expedia, they're breaking out. They're above the moving averages. We're noticing a golden cross. And just recently, it pulled back the pa <clears throat> Excuse me, the past two days. Voice crack there, guys. You caught that, right? Uh, the past two days after they reported earnings, the stock's gone down about 20 bucks. And actually, it was down even more than 20 bucks. Look at this. It hit $214 after earnings. And the day after earnings, um, it went to 188 So it dropped 12% from after market hours the day they reported earnings to the next day towards the close of the next day. Again, it dropped 12%, and today we went up about 2.7%. So what I'm noticing here, now that I'm looking at this five-day chart, good thing I popped this up, I'm noticing a head and shoulders on Expedia. And pay attention closely here, guys. If this head and shoulders plays out, it's not going to be good because at that point we might be going down 180s, 170s again, which is not what we want, especially if we want to go long EXPE. But if it breaks the neckline, now, 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 now this might be a point to go long if it breaks the neckline. The neckline of the head and shoulders is about $200, 202 So I'm going to put my alert at about, let's put it at 202 If this thing breaks 202 whether it's tomorrow, later this week, Next week, I don't know. But if it breaks 202, the head and shoulders is out the window. We break the neckline, and now we have a straight shot back to about 215, which, again, was that high from right after the earnings report. So watch out for Expedia. This one's going to be interesting these next couple of days. Occidental Petroleum, one of the crazy oil stocks we've talked about a lot on this channel. And full disclosure, I am not long Occidental Petroleum, but I am long XLE, which is an energy ETF. And I've been bullish on that for probably a year at this point, maybe even over a year. And this one, Occidental Petroleum, today alone went down about 4%. And we are seeing a bit of a pullback in oil and uh, energy stocks in general. XLE, the energy ETF, again, that I own, this one is down. It went down 2.3% today alone. And we had crude oil sell off. Let's see here. Um, actually, no, wait a second. Crude oil went up today, which is funny, 1.9%. Uh, Let me see here. Let me see the price action for crude oil throughout the day. It shot up a ton when we got that Russia-Ukraine news, and then it started um, cooling off a bit. So we are seeing a bit of a divergence here, at least for today. Oil's up while the energy stocks are down. So let's see if we could close that gap tomorrow, you know, or maybe some point this week. Occidental Petroleum. It might get bid up right off this 50 moving average. That's kind of what I think is going to happen. You know, it's been riding this moving average for a good month and a half, all of 2022. And now that we pulled back about 4% today, and overall from the recent $43.50 peak, we're down about 6%. That's that's a decent pullback. Maybe buyers start stepping in around this 50 moving average to uh, pop it back up. Maybe we even take out the highs from literally on Friday. So keep your eyes on Occidental Petroleum on this dip and all of the energy stocks for that matter. And HOG, Harley-Davidson, guys, Harley-Davidson. This, uh, this is one that reported numbers last week. When was it? 2 slash 8. So, yeah, that was what? Uh, last Tuesday or something like that. HOG reported numbers. They did very well. Awesome numbers, great guidance. The stock went bananas. It broke out of a multi-month downtrend, and it's still trading at a multi-month high. Uh, and today, it started to pull back a bit, which you guys might be saying, oh my goodness, jump ship, it's over. The breakout, it's a fake out. Not necessarily. You know, it ran up very aggressively. It got overbought. Now it's just simply pulling back. It's a healthy pullback. It went down about 2% today. And one level that I'm going to be watching for buyers to step in on Harley Davidson is right around 40 bucks, 40, 39.50 to about 40 bucks. That was resistance. 
from the end of October, pretty much all throughout the beginning of 2022 until we just broke out of it after the earnings. So that was resistance. Now it's support. So if buyers step in around 39, 40 bucks, that's going to be a very good sign. But if we break that point, we might be going down to 37, 3750, which is right by these uh, moving averages on the four hour chart. And if I had it my way in a perfect world, you know, buyers would be uh, stepping in at about 40 bucks, and this thing would catapult back up mid to high 40s. We'll see how it plays out, though, guys. Of course, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. You must always, always, always do your own due diligence, uh, do your own research. I've been wrong in the past, but that's just what I'm thinking when it comes down to Harley Davidson. New L is another one that we talked about, I believe, last week. Uh, New L brands, they reported numbers, strong numbers. It's at a multi month high. We broke out. Today, again, we broke out above the 2475 resistance from back in November. And today went up over 2% in the middle of this crazy volatile red market. So at this point, I think Newell is getting ready to fill the gap to about $26 at minimum, which was resistance in August, September. And if $26 breaks, you guys can see the chart. 28 might be right around the corner. So NWL, watch out for that breakout, the continuation here. Now let's take a look at a blue chip stock, which has gotten destroyed lately. And not many of the blue chips are in a bear market right now. Uh, some of them are, of course, some of them, but a lot of them are still doing pretty well. They're only down 5 10%. Some aren't even down that much at all. But Target, TGT, is down 25% from all-time highs. Well in a bear market, guys. Well in a bear market. You guys can see it was at 275 back in the middle of November. Now we're holding above 200 by a thread. I mean, today alone we went down 1.4%. We closed at 208, and the low on the day was at 205. So this one's pricing in. It's not necessarily pricing in bad news per se. I don't want to say that. Uh, it's more of a valuation uh, compression in my opinion because this stock got very hot. If you look on the three-year chart, you're, you're going to be mind blown. Uh, well, that's the all-time chart. Look at the three-year chart. This thing barely had any pullbacks from 2019. Even in the 2020 crash, it didn't go down that much. It went down from 120, 130 to about 90. That's not that bad. It only went down 30%. I mean, yes, 30% is a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, a lot of stocks went down way more than 30% in that time period. And since March 2020, about two years, it barely had any pullbacks. Now we're finally getting the pullback, right? Look at this. Double top, clear as day on the three-year chart. If you were in this stock, guys, which full disclosure, I was not in the stock, but if you were trading this and you saw the technicals and you saw that it double topped, it failed back in November to break out of the high from August, you should have dumped because that was a clear double top, clear as day. And again, now we're down 25% from that point. And based on this three-year chart, there could be a little bit more downside. I don't think it's going to come all the way down to the 180 SMA, which puts it right around 150, 150 bucks. I mean, if it did come down to 150, I would probably be a buyer of Target um, for, from a long-term perspective. But again, I don't think it's going to come down that much. But could I see it come down 175, maybe 180? Yes, absolutely. 175, 180 was support about a year ago, March 21. That's where it could be headed, guys. That's really where it could be headed. And mind you, we have earnings coming up on the 1st. So about two, two, three weeks from today, we have earnings on Target. And again, it's down 25%. If they do pretty well on earnings... On the flip side, don't be surprised if this thing U turns and starts ripping. You know, it all depends on these earnings coming up in about two weeks. So look at Target, guys. In a bear market, one of the only, I mean, there's a couple, but one of the prominent blue chip stocks that is in a bear market right now is Target. And to end off this video, let's talk a little bit about GLD. We mentioned gold 
earlier today. Gold was ripping. I think it went up one point, yeah, one point seven percent on the day. It's on the verge of breaking nineteen hundred, guys. And I've mentioned before, not just today, but weeks ago, that I think gold is going to do well in twenty two. And now that we're getting a lot of fear, uncertainty, war, inflation. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? People are flocking into gold. Gold is not just an inflation hedge. It's a every uh, you know a collapse hedge. It's a war hedge. It's a fear hedge. You know, I, I, you know what I mean, right? You know what I mean. When there's a lot of fear, people go to gold. That's what we're seeing right now. So how could we trade this? And first and foremost, guys, full disclosure. I'm long on gold. Um, it's not like I have all my money in gold. I'm not a gold bug or anything like that. But I do have some gold, some physical gold, and um, I'm not planning on selling it. You know, it's kind of a long-term position. Uh, it's not even an investment. It's more of kind of like a collectible. I, I just like gold coins, guys, all right? Call me a freaking boomer, whatever. I don't care. I like gold a lot. Uh, not again, not as an investment, but kind of just, it's just a weird, um, I don't want to call it a hobby because I'm not obsessed with it like that, but it's, it's a collection, right? You know, I like gold. I like things of value and uh, I like things that go up. Let's be honest. And I think, <laughs> I think gold's going to go up and we could trade it in the uh, markets here you know, by GLD. GLD, you're not going to have gold in your possession. It's kind of the paper way, if you will, to trade gold or even hold gold. And GLD is breaking out. Look at this yearly chart. Look at the three-year chart. This thing is gaining some steam. And I think it could go to 180, 185, maybe 195 if gold really starts getting hot. So keep your eyes on GLD, guys. Target, Newell, keep your eyes on Harley Davidson, Energy, Occidental Petroleum, Expedia, Smith and Wesson. These are a couple of stocks I'm watching for this week. So let me know your thoughts on this video, the markets down below in the comments, hit the like button, subscribe, make sure to join my Patreon. If you guys want all my buys, sells, call outs, morning update videos, plus more, that's on Patreon, link down below. And if you want some free money, who doesn't like free money, guys? Get your money from Moomoo. Link down below. Deposit 100 bucks using my link from Moomoo. Deposit. Oh, I said it already. 100 bucks. I'll say it again. You could get up to five stocks, each of which could be valued up to 3500 bucks. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great night. Keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.